And now, a powerful black man, trashed by another powerful black man. Starring the president, and this guy. President Obama is a white president in blackface. Oh, black wow. America would have done much better with a white president. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Right. Who's this guy? Byron Allen. Huge name in entertainment. A whole network of studios, several different shows, absolutely skewered President Obama. What set Allen off? It was when the president was talking about Baltimore and referred to the people rioting in response to the death of Freddie Gray as... A handful of uh, criminals uh, and thugs. I'm disappointed that uh, President Obama uh -huh. called those young men out there in Baltimore thugs. Now a lot of people are. So that's between the lines. Then he starts to up the rhetoric a little bit more. I, I, and let I, me say this, President Obama. You have forgotten us. You have let us down. It's okay to be the president of the United States and also be a black man. And guess what? People will respect you more if you stop acting like you're not. I have never been more offended in my damn life. One of America's most prominent outspoken civil rights activists. And now Al Sharpton, along with Comcast and Time Warner Cable, are facing a $20 billion lawsuit over alleged racial discrimination against black-owned media companies. Now, in the complaint, Byron Allen, a comedian, TV presenter, and CEO of Entertainment Studios, alleges that Comcast gave Al Sharpton that 6 p.m. show on MSNBC, for which he's been paid approximately $750,000 per year, despite notoriously low ratings, and in exchange for his continued public support for Comcast on issues of diversity. Now, it all sounds kind of convoluted, and I want to get to the bottom of it. So joining me now in Los Angeles is Byron Allen. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Brian, for having me. Uh, this case uh, has been getting a lot of coverage this week. We've heard from Comcast, and I'll read their comment in a minute. But, but tell me the, the one-minute version of what you're alleging. Real simple. Uh, the cable industry, AT&T, DirecTV, Comcast, Time Warner, they spent about $50 billion a year licensing cable networks and advertising with less than, one, less than $3 million per year going to 100% African-American-owned media. Now, what they do is they make token donations to people like Al Sharpton, the NAACP, the Urban League, and after taking those donations, they negotiated a fraudulent MOU that says this is okay for black people to live by. What America needs to understand is that Al Sharpton does not speak for me. Al Sharpton does not speak for black people. It's like I ask people, who is the white person who speaks for you? It's racist to even believe that Al Sharpton is the go-to person. Shame on you, Sony, for thinking, sit down with Al Sharpton, and that negates your racist emails about President Obama. So it's real simple. These, these uh, token donations they make to him, as reported in the New York Post, allows them to have racial cover. This is why we're not getting enough advertising or any advertising from McDonald's and Coca-Cola and Chrysler and General Motors and AT&T. They don't spend any money with African-American-owned media. Something that's very alarming, AT&T spent more money on Al Sharpton's lavish 60th birthday than they spent on Ebony Magazine, the biggest African-American magazine in America, around 70 years, 10 million readers per month. AT&T spent only $30 thousand dollars on that magazine. Walmart has given money to Al Sharpton. Walmart doesn't spend any money in Ebony Magazine, and they barely do business with me in a long-term partnership, and I'm constantly going back and forth with Walmart and Chrysler as well. So he is the least expensive Negro. Don't really do business now, with you know real African-American-owned companies. Something like that sound. I mean, when you say that about Al Sharpton, are you, are you saying he's the numbers? The numbers companies? are actual. The numbers are just, just follow the money. That You know, don't do business with real African-American-owned companies. Just make a token. Give him 50000 and a bucket of chicken, and we're good. We won't have any problems with real African-American-owned media. You should not be, Chrysler, you shouldn't be giving him money and not spending money with me. Radio, d d d DJ. One Nation, One Station. Okay, Dr. Mar, I would like to move the needle to address our ADOS audience, as well as those who support Byron Allen's upcoming case versus Comcast. 
Um, and I'm going to tie it into what we've been talking about today. And that's the Harriet Tubman movie. We deconstructed it. You did a great job. Thank you so much for that. All right. So here's the article. This article is posted on Euroweb.com or Euroweb, E-U-R-W-E-B.com. And the title of the article is Harriet Tubman Film Receives Harsh Criticism from Black Twitter, hashtag ADOS. And I'm u- I use this because it quickly explains how Harriet Tubman ties in to Byron Allen's case. So here's the article, and I'll be as brief as I possibly can. So this is how it starts. Harriet Tubman's biopic has been released, and it's already known that several had called for a boycott prior to the release because of Comcast's involvement with the film and the company's Supreme or current Supreme Court case involving the Civil Rights Act of 1866. In addition, Cynthia Arrivo, I think that's how you pronounce her last name, a British Nigerian being cast instead of an African American was also seen as a major problem. And then the article goes on to explain the fact that ADOS had major issues because several characters were invented. And again, we rehashed, um, they rehashed what we talked about earlier as it relates to black males and the demonization of and you know, there's a lot more to this article. So people, listeners, if you want to learn more, just go to euroweb.com for more details. But Dr. Omar, at this time, I'd like you to weigh in on what I just asked you um, as it relates to Byron Allen and ADOS. Thank you. Let, let me say this. I can support an effort from a group who I may not agree with. I don't agree with everything the nation of Islam teaches. I am not an Asiatic black man. I do not come from Asia. I'm an African. I will never support that. But I do support the nation of Islam and many of the things that they teach. You see, um, the NAACP, okay, that organization was founded by white folks to control the progress that black people made. But there's a lot of good black people in the NAACP, and I can support that. Black Lives Matter, founded by LBGTQs to advance the LBGTQ movement, behind the RBG flag in a strategic Machiavellian way. I don't support the movement, but there's a lot of young, good black activists in Black Lives Matter, and I will support them. So I'm saying that to say that even though I totally reject the Adolf's premise, I think it's reactionary, divisive, unnecessary, okay, I can support them if I find that their approach to the Harriet movement, that the, the Harriet movie, and the objections to the Harriet movie are along the same lines as my objections to the Harriet movie. I can support them on that. In other words, I can unite with other brothers and sisters on certain agendas where we agree on. I don't have to say, well, because I don't agree with the move, the movement they belong to. I can't support a certain aspect or agenda or initiative that they are embarking upon. With that being said, the Byron Island lawsuit involving the Civil Rights uh, Bill, I believe, of 1866, that's something I'm still investigating. So before I actually give a position statement on it, I have to look further. But in general, in general, I'm going to support him because he's a brother who's fighting against racism, and he's a brother who has brought to the forefront a Machiavellian clandestine attempt by the United States government to undermine a law that was put in place to potentially protect black folks. So in general, I'm going to support him. But I do take issue with the fact that he has a white wife. I take right. issue with that. Just like I, just like I take issue with the fact that Tone Talk, I heard him say out of his mouth on a YouTube video. I watched him one time. Somebody sent me a clip because I never knew the brother. And I love him. He's still my brother. Okay, so this ain't personal. This is political. But I heard him say out of his own mouth that we have more in common with white folks in America than Africans from the continent. I heard him say that. So there's no way in heaven I'm going to support a movement that would say blacks in America have more in common with white folks in America than we have with our African brothers and sisters um, back back in the continent. And from what I also see, this movement doesn't take issue with interracial dating at all, which is one of the leading causes of the destruction of the traditional African family. So if you can support interracial dating, 
that damn sure a movement that I cannot support. But again, with the Byron Island situation, I support that brother. I hope he wins because it's about us. It's not about him. It's about us because I'm seeing some reactionary Negroes get on the Internet and say things like, well, I'm not going to support his case because he got a white wife. I totally reject okay. that. We have to be able to separate the individual from what they represent. It's no de- different than when uh, the brother was murdered out in Sacramento. Stephon Clark, the brother who lost his life, uh, rest in peace. A lot of black women rushed in and said, I'm not standing up for him because he said he don't date black girls and he had a Chinese girlfriend or a white girlfriend. And my point to black women at that time, Sister Valerie, was this ain't about them. Police genocide is a systemic movement to eliminate us all. Genocide, the word itself, the word itself precludes any use of it for an individual. You don't commit genocide against an individual. You commit genocide against an entire people. So the Stefan Clark, the Trayvon, the Michael Brown, they could have all had white girlfriends. I don't know if they did or not, but guess what? I'm going to stand up and fight because they are only the representative of the community. Police genocide is a problem that affects us all. If Congress undermines the Civil Rights Bill of 1866, that affects us all. That doesn't just affect Byron Island and his white wife. So we have to stop letting individual behaviors, individual behaviors motivate us to turn our back on a systemic problem that affects us all. Quick point before we let the judge in. There is a brother working on a film in South Africa on the life of one of the greatest Pan-Africanists who ever lived. His name was Dr. Robert Sabukwe. He was an attorney, and he was mentor to Steve Biko, the father of the black consciousness movement in South Africa. I am being considered as the lead actor in this film on the life of Robert Sabukwe. I am not a native-born South African. I was not born on the continent. I was born right here in the ghettos of North Philadelphia. But guess what? Not a single South African brother or sister of mine has said Umar cannot play our ancestor Robert Sabukwe because he was born in America and not Africa. Don't we have the same DNA? Don't we have the same genes? Do we not all have our same origin on the continent? Do we not all share the same spiritual, cultural, anthropological, psychological bond? Wouldn't it be ridiculous for them to reject me purely because I'm an African born on another soil? I haven't heard a single African reject the possibility of Dr. Umar playing as his hero, Robert Sabuqua. So why would some reactionary white woman-loving Self-hating Negroes take issue with a sister playing Harriet Tubman just because she is of Nigerian descent. So am I, mind you. So are many of us, mind you. Don't you know that every African American is a descendant of an African nation? Every last one of us got Nigerian blood. Many of us got Ghanaian blood. We got Liberian blood, Congolese blood. We all have that. So the fact that they're pointing out that she's Nigerian is ridiculous because if you test all of our DNA, we all come from the continent and we all come from specific ethnic nations on the continent. So to say she can't play Harriet Tubman because she knows which country in Africa she comes from is ridiculous. And to say that she's British-raised Nigerian, so not only is she being castigated because she happens to know she's from Nigeria, that's where she's from. But she's also being castigated because she comes from Britain. Why is that an issue? I don't give a damn what African country she comes from, and I don't give a damn what European nation she was raised in. Here is the only thing that would concern me. And I raised the same concern for the sister who played Tupac's mother, who also played the leader of the Dora Milaje and the Black Panther movement. How much does Harriet Tubman mean to you? How much does a Phoenix Shakur mean to you? My only test is or assessment is how much does the character you're playing mean to you? Because if that if her playing Harriet Tubman meant nothing to her or didn't mean much to her, she shouldn't have played it. Just like for the sister who played the Phoenix Shakur. If a Phoenix Shakur means a lot to that sister, 
And if Feeney Shakur right. was a hero for that sister, she could play her. But if a Feeney Shakur meant nothing to her, then she should not play her. Whether they were born in Africa, Jamaica, Canada, Australia, Houston, L.A., Philly, Brooklyn, New York, Detroit, Chicago, doesn't matter because we are all one family. And that is the type of tribalism I have a problem with. They're making it a bigger issue that she was a British race Nigerian. That's more important to those tribalistic Negroes. That's what is important to them. That's more important than the fact that they use this movie to assassinate the character of all black men. See, they focus in on tribalism as opposed to focusing on the hidden messages that will demean all black men, no matter which of the six continents they live on. That's my problem. There's no room in tri- for tribalism within Pan-Africanism. Right. And thank you for that. Okay. Let me say this. Welcome. Our Welcome. naivety, uh, our naivety, lack of sophistication and ignorance is appalling. This whole thing with the Tubman movie is laid out to a formula to generate black going to the movies and spending money. It is, as people have said, superficially one that downs black men. But the primary objective of this thing is the feminists want a female on a bill of American currency. They don't care whether it's black, white, brown, red, yellow. They want a female. And this thing is a propaganda movie to get it authorized to change a $20 bill to reflect a black woman who led about 240 slaves to freedom. That discounts Thurgood Marshall, who affected tens of millions. That discounts Frederick Douglass, who impacted tens of millions. That discounts Martin Luther King. That discounts all sorts of black folk who have impacted many more blacks than Harriet Tubman. Additionally, The status of a race is not determined by its women. It's determined by its men, and it's a slap in the face to black America for this to be done. But we aren't even paying attention to that. Next thing, Byron Allen is a low-down scumbag. I know him personally. I know what that scoundrel is up to. This has absolutely nothing to do with African Americans. This is because CBS is backing him and CBS is backed by Viacom, and they're trying to corner the market on black rerun content. So Byron Allen has sued, amongst other things, Al Sharpton and some other networks because he's saying that the networks give all of their slots to other black people besides him, and it's a plot, racist plot, to get at him so he can't get the rerun content. This son of a bitch tried to sell me out. I saw him talking to the CBS executives. I sent a spy over there to report back what he was talking about, and I played along with him as he tried to go along with CBS executives to trap me into a contractual violation when I told them to go to hell. They could take what they were doing and shove it. And he tried to set me up. And when he's talking about being a billionaire, that's a damn lie. CBS is just fronting off another house, Negro, to get him to do what they want him to do for their own adventures. He didn't have enough money to pay me for what he was asking me to do, which was part of the trap. Now, what we have in place is exactly like what happened with the 15th Amendment, which was set up for the benefit of ex-slaves. But instead of being used for the ex-slaves in the 1870s, It was used to deal with advancing the interest of a fictional person, also known as the American Corporation. So the U.S. Supreme Court, the lower courts, used the 15th Amendment not to deal with the plight of former slaves, but to advance the interest of what is now corporate America. It is the same thing. Black folk, um, descend American descendants of slavery or whatever, Eidos or whatever, has nothing at stake at this except if he wins. That means CBS, which probably has the worst track record out there amongst all of the media, 
entities when it comes to dealing forthrightly with black folk will win and they will corner the content market. They will have corrupted the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and once again switched it to a device to be used for corporate America because they got that snake scoundrel Byron Allen fronting for them. They're putting up the money. They're making the arrangements. They're trying to corner something through him. And he's already got arrangements to get taken in under Viacom. So they are fronting this off. They just used his name, and he is a house Negro that's quite willing to do that. Black folk are getting ranked out by this whole thing. A lot of these black stars are entitled to uh, what they call residuals, which, in other words, if you are part of it and they run it, you're supposed to be getting paid for it. So they're trying to cut us out. So we don't get the residuals, and I've had to hire counsel because CBS is so dilatory on what they do that they owe me. They're two years behind on the residuals they owe me. So what Allen is doing for CBS is trying to corner the market so it looks like there's some black man that's running this whole thing. So all of these black celebrities all the way down to the people that are doing almost bit parts are entitled to be paid, won't get paid so that black people will have even less to say about content. So when somebody black comes in trying to break into something, they'll have even less opportunity to break in. And CBS, having cornered this market through Allen, will be able to clamp down and suppress any black activity. Now, that's what's really going on. We've got no stake in this except if he wins. If he wins, we're screwed. But we're so ignorant and stupid that we just, oh, black man suing on the issue of them trying to, the government trying to suppress the Civil Rights Act of 1866. They haven't done a damn thing on that in 150 years. It's on the books, but it's essentially been inactive. So some smart white boys said, okay, let's use it to screw these black folk and corner this market. We saw it all the time when they started having preferences For black contractors, what did the white boys do? They went and hired somebody black to front off for them. He got a few bucks and change, but black businesses got no piece of the action. And the white boys just just got it. That's what's going on. Now, that's smart business, but we don't have to be suckers and damn ignorant fools to go along with it. We need to acquire some information and knowledge. And by the way, a thing I always emphasize, because I've seen it, firsthand, up close and personal, is we have every damn stupid, lame excuse to maintain our ignorance and justify what's going on. We don't go to school and pay any attention K through 12. If we did and we focused on that and we had somebody at home to focus us on that, So we would actually pay attention. Every damn door in the rest of your life is at least cracked open. You may have to kick it open, but it's not locked to you. And we don't pay attention to academia because we have an agenda. Yo, man, teach ain't on my agenda. Well, you damn fool, you're going to be complaining in a few years about you were discriminated against by white supremacy. Yes, it's there. Yes, The worst industry I have dealt with in my 72 years of life is not some of the racist stuff in the South. It's not some of the other garbage around the rest of the country. The most racist industry I have ever encountered is Hollywood. And we worship the damn thing. And we are all ignorantly piling in. We got to support the brother as he protects the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1866. Some damn fool woman that I blocked on Twitter wanted to say, you don't even know what an amicus brief is. I said, you goddamn fool, I've written some of them. And I have had some submitted to me as a judge. So I don't, what do you mean I don't know of what this is? You have no idea what this is. I read it. We studied it 50 years ago in law school. And you're trying to tell me I've got no clue and you are up there, you don't even know what the hell is going on. But your ignorant ass has got yourself up there and you are fronting off for ignorance because you think it looks right. Doctor, you're right about this whole thing about black folks seizing on little funny kind of agendas. And what it looks like to me, 
I also had political science. I also had physics and history and psychology and all kinds of other stuff, too. Uh, but what it looks like to me is the same thing the Nazis did. They wanted to seize a background for the Germans, so they adopted the Aryan Superman who were supposed to be blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Aryans don't look blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Basically, there are a lot of them still in the world, but they're known as the Indian upper caste, the Brahmins. And guess who we know that's a Brahmin? Kamala Harris is what a real Aryan looks like. They are paper bag brown with long, coarse, wavy hair. They are not blonde-haired and blue-eyed. But you see how that myth is corrupted? I've seen black folk get out there and claim to be the original Jews. I've seen black folk talk about they settled North America first way back uh, five million years ago, which is ridiculous. And not the Native Americans. It's the Native Americans. All kinds of stupid mythology because you don't have any pride in self. Now, what we need to do is just focus on having pride in what the hell you do rather than having something to step up for your lack of fortitude, lack of a work ethic, lack of the accountability that you should have to yourself and those of you responsible for to get your butt up and put your nose in a book instead of trying to play video games as a kid, instead of trying to play basketball as a damn kid, instead of watching basketball as an adult, instead of watching NFL as an adult, instead of watching Major League Baseball as an adult, and learning not a damn thing about what's going on around you. See, we have a problem. And it makes me ill to look at this. Uh, There was a thing on here where a mother snatches an unruly child who is disruptive as the devil in school by the back of the collar and hauling him out and pulling her belt off and wearing his behind out. Oh, my God, this was awful. She embarrassed him in front of his friends. She should be locked up. Oh, the brutality. Hell. I look at today's world, and I look at the youth who have been raised the way these fools are talking about, and I see how screwed up they are. But I've had that happen to me, and it happened to me. One time, I was about six years old, and I swear I never thought about doing what I did to provoke that again in my life. But unlike this child, I not only caught it from my mother all the way to the car in front of everybody I was in class with. When I got home, my next door neighbor jumped me. And when my daddy got home, he tore me up. In other words, to this day, I can still feel that behind beat. But the bottom line is, is me and all my friends on this generation, we'll be out in the driveway sitting there after an affair or function or met up for a beer someplace. And we'll say, oh, man, you rem- did you? Oh, man, I remember when my old man told me up, man. And we laugh about it because it's part of growing up. But these poor sorry specimens have no recollection because they didn't get the privilege of getting lined up and taught what's right and had it imposed on you so you don't forget it for the rest of your life. It is amazing. I got a, I got a question for you, Judge, if I could. Yes, sir. Uh because I would hate for any listeners, and particularly feminists, to misinterpret your comments earlier on Queen of the Harriet Tubman. I don't goddamn about feminists. They can go straight <laughs> to hell, and I know they hate themselves because they got two X chromosomes instead of an XY. They are fraudulent, well, self-hating, and they're sick. Well, I'm also, I also wanted to clarify for me as well, Judge, because um, I know you had mentioned Thurgood Marshall, Dr. King, Frederick Douglass, and I just wanted to uh, clarify with you that your comments were not suggestive of saying that by doing the Harriet Tubman movie that that somehow undermined the works of those great male leaders, because that's what it kind no, of No, it does like. But the objective is, I've heard it from the Hollywood sources I have. These feminists are trying to do this movie so they can get a black woman put on a $20 bill. And they have no interest in this movie is to soften the public up to the idea of taking a black woman who frees slaves uh, by leading them to freedom and getting her or another one like her on a $20 bill. They can't get a white woman, so they want a black woman. They don't care. They just want a woman, and it downs masculinity. 
Now, everybody on a bill is not a dead president. Don't forget Ben Franklin. He was never a president. So that's plenty of precedent to put in somebody black who was never a president. Like, let's say if we want to go back to the 19th century, like all of the rest of the people are on there, died off in in the 19th century or the 18th century. We've got Ben Franklin, so we can have Frederick Douglass. Okay. But you, you think, I mean, do you? That's you, what I'm saying. Okay, but you don't have a problem with a black woman, and in this case, Harriet Tubman being memorialized in whatever way that comes. You don't have a problem with that, do you? Or or do you? I have got a, a big problem if it's on a bill before they put a black man's face on one. I have a big problem Why? with that. Why? Do because you have a historically, with a black the status woman? of a, an ethnic group is determined by its men, not its women. And that you put a you, black woman on there before a black man is insulting to the black race because you're saying I, I, the men ain't uh, worth a damn. To put a woman I up disagree. there first. I disagree. Well, I don't. Judge. I disagree. I don't think. I won't. And the other thing is, Harry, I, I black male think, leadership. Honoring a black woman needs does to not... lead the black race by saying, impose <laughs> your sense of responsibility on motherhood and start raising some decent young men instead of these little monsters that you have running around the house where you don't want to have a father involved with them. Start being but, real mothers and pay attention to it. That's but what honoring a But honoring a black woman, Judge, how is that? An insult to black men I don't understand because that Because if the they had be? a black man on there It wouldn't be But if you put a black woman first That's an insult to black men Harriet Tubman rescued 200 I disagree. She I disagree. rescued maybe 200 she rescued more, no, more than that judge. Well it more may be that. But there were black men that did something Better than that too There's one mm-hmm. that's down here Featured at a house in nor Going into North Memphis here where they had an underground railroad and the brother got several thousand black slaves to freedom. Okay. But they don't even right. commemorate well, him and you, you can't even hear learn about but it. But Judge Joe Unless Judge you Brown, happen to walk you, in that monument. But but wouldn't so you what agree, the hell they don't think they want you to agree do it that because Frederick, you somebody to freedom? Judge, Why don't they get judge, the trouble? Judge, judge, wouldn't you agree that Frederick Douglass, Dr. King, and Thurgood Marshall have all been exceedingly more celebrated and remembered in both black history and American history than Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. They need, Frederick to, put Douglas, them, they need to put them on a bill and show respect. They've got a homicidal Frederick, maniac, Andrew <laughs> Jackson, on a $20 bill. They've got a non-president, Benjamin Franklin, on a $50 bill. They've got Grant. They've got every Calvin Coolidge on but a damn Judge, bill, too. Douglas and King have been written about more than any other black I don't hero care. in American it's history. Disrespectful. Why I'm not black give, man, and I remember, look, look, why look, not give I black women their opportunity, Judge? I don't why care. Not give, you put a black man on there first because the thing of it is they are not I going disagree. to lynch. They are the, not going the, to generally lynch black women. They'll rape them. But they lynch the black men. If they would have caught Harriet Tubman, they, they would have lynched the dollars. They would have caught Harriet Tubman, they would have lynched it. They go in and deal if, with if, getting rid of the men. If they, they would have caught Harriet the Tubman, they would have lynched the judge. Stand and deliver, sacrifice self, be the last in the damn lifeboat when the women and children get in there first. You put a black judge, man on the corner. I hope you're yeah. not. Okay. I hope you're not. I, I'm, I'm sorry. You're not a male I, there's no way you judge. can judge. I hope you're not a male chauvinist, judge. I hope you're I not am, a male chauvinist. I am a male chauvinist. <laughs> exactly. Oh I will oh die first. Judge, I will sacrifice for women and children. And I'll be what damned if I don't deserve my precedence because of that. Because the bottom line is when it hits the fan, I'm going to be there first. And I would count it my privilege to die that way. Rather than dying in bed, but that means and your argument, Judge, that, is not better than the argument made in the movie. They get me first when they got me out the way. Then you worry about that. But Judge, that makes you just as bad well, as How the, the hell did this system not put a white woman on a bill? Now you put a because white, white woman man on doesn't bill, be, because, because, because the white man doesn't believe in the equality of gender. Some dollar bill. 
but we should not use them as our standard. The white man does not believe in equality of gender. That's why the white I'm woman not is not using on the white bill. man. I'm talking about the standards whether you come from Asia, Africa, well, what is wrong South with America, America Harry North America, America, or the North bill. Pole. You come from know. the Pacific Islands. I'm talking but about judge, written anything. That's the standards because it's judge, called mankind. Remember, I don't buy into this feminist bullshit. In terms of actual life accomplishment, as great as Douglas was, as great as King was, as great as Thurgood Marshall was, none of them went through the personal risk of danger to the extent that Harriet Tubman did, and she this did it. This black man is commemorated Dr. down King here at a, a monument warrior. in Memphis who did Douglas more. Douglas was not a guerrilla warrior. Thurgood Marshall was not a guerrilla warrior. Harriet Tubman was a guerrilla warrior in the trenches. None of them were. Excuse me. The right to go Frederick to the Douglas first. lost the son in the Civil War. He was no, with the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. Frederick Douglass Douglass did not fight Infantry. in the Civil War, Judge. His Frederick Douglass did not fight in the, in the Civil War. Same yes, thing. But he did not. But he did not. Well, his son did. Didn't. Same thing. He prepared Harry his son Tubman to make the sacrifice the war, of freedom. He Harry picked up Tubman an infield rifle and he troops. shot it out with the Johnny Ribs. Okay? Harriet Tubman led troops in the Civil look, War, Judge. Do you really think that, that there are black men that <laughs> also did that? I appreciate what Harriet Tubman did. But the bottom line but why is, can't she is be the honest, ignorance Judge? is but the bottom why line is, is there, look, men first. Is men first. No man did men the first first did. in freedom. Nobody Women don't get to did. free. See, this Come is what's great about this country. You cannot this I think we got no about two minutes before Judge we Brown. open up the line. See, this you whole country has got war. Because the men enslaved us, our the men with the black men had faith over us, the black men freed must themselves. Black. And the bottom line is, is the reason women have what they have is they didn't go off and pick up a gun and enforce it. Men said, let's be fair. And if the Don't bottom make line women the enemy, the point, Judge, then you back. become a reverse feminist. Don't make women the enemy. Don't make them the our women are I not hold our the feminists enemy. the enemy. Those scoundrels have done a lot to screw up this country. They have emasculated it. They've got running dogs in Hollywood that don't even like the fact that they have XY chromosomes and wish they had a double X. And let's get around it. Women aren't gonna sit there and be out and knocking heads. Because you can't. It's that's a man's job. And that you've effeminized the black race so badly, not women so much, black women, but the country has effeminized the black women, black males so much, he acts like a woman. He doesn't know what the hell it is to be a man. We right. still have to Judge, fight these folks for something. Can we let the, um, a few callers into the conversation? Sure, let them down in. To the last 30 minutes, 202 your mic is live. Hello. Uh, how is everyone? Uh, Judge Joe Brown, Sister Valerie, yes. and everyone else. Uh, this is Dr. Randy Short. Um, I'm listening to the conversation. I have great love and esteem for Harriet Tubman, but I want to say this. One, I'm for her having a pedestal and everything else that uh, Brother Umar just said. However, there's a nuance in what the judge is saying that is an affront to a lot of people who have who've missed a certain sort of psychological, emotional vote. And our people have. Wait, what happened to your volume? Um, I didn't. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, much yes, better. Yes, clearly. Now. Do you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, yes. we can hear you. What I was saying is that. I'm here in Washington, D.C., sitting in on a trial for Roger Stone. Uh, and I want to tell you uh, the conversation I had with the press yesterday, and I embarrassed this media person because there is, pardon my language, there is this constant psychological, emotional masturbation of black women at the expense of all black people, men, women, and children. For example, when you talk about elections, they never talk about black male voters. They, talk, they don't do this to any other group of people. When they speak, 
They only make reference to the women. It is a way of disrespecting black men and black women and black children. And sadly, we have so many psychologically castrated or opportunistic, cynical men or women that play to the gallery of the black man being second best or less than that they have put, they've made black women into social hermaphrodites who stand in the place of men. And it is dangerous. And as a result, I see all these boys who want to be women because they want to be somebody. We're going to have a hell of a lot of people die from all the venereal diseases and things out here because so many boys have women so high on the pedestal until they're ashamed of their maleness. And that's going to kill our race. And so uh, I feel this, what the judge is saying, while it's a bitter pill for certain people, they're missing the nuance. They do not hold up Latino women over Latino men or Asian Pacific women over Asian Pacific men. They don't do this for any other group. And many of the people who call themselves conscious or Pan-African or whatever miss this. And so this whole mother goddess thing has nullified their reason to say if your enemy is doing something, you should question it and step back from it. But instead, I don't know if it's the money that they get. I see this in the churches where the little crooked Negro preachers always celebrate the women, alienate and estrange the men because they want to get their cash and manipulate them. But we have a, a psychopathic pimp culture. And trust me, if you're a pimp and you exploit women, you're not really a man in my book. Any men that tear down and denigrate women are monsters in my view. And there's a way where you can denigrate a woman by masculinizing her, making her be in something that she ought not be. So Harriet Tubman, she's a great ancestor, bar none. However, since Nat Turner is somewhere in my family, if we really wanted to make a stand, why not put Nat Turner on some money? Why not put uh, the Seminoles, another branch of my family, or the Black Maroons in the Dismal Swamp who refused to be slaves and lived independently? Uh, or there's a guy named John Parker down in Ripley, Ohio, who helped free maybe six, seven, eight hundred Black folks. These stories, if we measure our history based on the amount of research that remains undone, we only have a partial idea of great people who've existed, both male and female. So great love for Harriet Tubman, but the judge is correct. When you watch the news this election season, they don't even discuss black male voters. They don't discuss black men. When they picked the jury, they had, they had 120 people for a jury, and they had about four black men in a city that's 50% black, and this systematic removal and debasement of black men is okay. There's a common little saying they have in the street here among black men that hate other black men. They're actually more dangerous than the homosexual. At least the homosexual wants sex from another man. There's a type of black man I call a, a brother effer instead of an mf'er. He wants all the other black men destroyed for him to be the one sole important black man. That's killing us. I need the judge. I need Brother Umar. We need to learn how to coalesce as men to protect our communities, and that cannot be replaced by great women. It never will be the substitute. There will never be an excuse for it. And when people hide behind that, that's a cultural shibboleth of denial that we black men have been broken and been knocked down, and we need to pull ourselves up and when we pull ourselves up, it is not to leave the women or children behind, but to, to protect them, provide for them, and be the kind of men that this system has systematically worked against us being. There's no substitute for anything other than manhood. Read all the black African nationalists of the 18th and 19th century, and, and even the women call for it too. I have that speech by Nanny Helen Burroughs that I think I sent to you, Judge. She was calling for manhood. Uh, feminism hates black men. Feminism is a scourge. Feminism is a social intellectual disease. I worked at the Schlesinger Library, which is the feminist pentagon. I've read Betty Friedan's plans to get rid of the family. 
What would we have if the feminists achieved that? So I don't live in fear. All the little silly folks who follow white female supremacy, which is called feminism, are fools. Okay, I'm not sure if we lost him. Um, one more call, two one six. I like to respond. I'm still can here. I, can I? I'm okay. Still, yeah, you can respond. I'm listening. Okay, okay. okay. respond then, uh, guys. We are down to the last fifteen minutes of the show. First of all, we know that there is a deliberate attempt to replace strong heterosexual alpha male black leadership with women. It goes back in recent times, at least to the 1970s, when they made the black man economically irrelevant to the black woman's life. Mass incarceration, miseducation, fratricide, police genocide, the list goes on. Black women have more education. They make more income. That was engineered to make us irrelevant. We're the only men who are out-earned and out-educated by our women, but that does not make her my enemy. Nothing the white man does will make my woman my enemy. There's been a lot of movies that have been produced that have come out about black men. I have never seen us take issue with the movies of other black men just because they were about black men. Of course we got millions of heroes. We got millions of heroes. But that don't mean that there's anything wrong with lifting one of them up, especially one whose works is almost as unparalleled as the Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. No one else walked them shoes. You're not going to find nobody else who walked them shoes the way she walked them doing all that she did in her life. There's no man, no woman you're going to find whose life parallels hers identically. Impossible. But with that being said, I'm an enemy of feminism but I'm a big supporter of black womanism. And I think that as we castigate, ridicule, and criticize the evils that are being introduced in our community as black men, we also have a responsibility to be extremely responsible in our work and in our work so we don't send the wrong message to black women that we have a problem with you manifesting the best that they can be. Because the white man trying to put the black woman above the black man in and of itself does not constitute a problem if we as a community can organize against it. My wife earning more money than me is not a problem unless I swallow the white man's reasons as to why she makes more money than me. A black woman having a better job than her husband is not automatically a problem unless she swallows the white man's reason as to why she makes more than him, and that is because he's a no good in effa. It's only if we buy into the philosophy that they push in will it begin to affect us. But I have a big problem with anyone who says we cannot celebrate black women just because the white man wants to use them against black men. He has his agenda, but the black community should have its agenda. And my agenda is to uplift black women irrespective of what the white man is doing. I don't have to fight or push back on my sister just because the white man is trying to use her as an enemy against us. He has his agenda, but what about our agenda? That's all I have to say on that. Let me add something to this a little bit, historical and research. Fifty years ago, I was an intern at a D.C. think tank, all right? And one of my assignments was to go over the slave pamphlets on microfilm at the Library of Congress. And one of the things that we talked about, well, which was in there, was this. At all costs, never recognize leadership in a black male. Always promote the black female slave as being the one that you go to to get advice on what's going on with the slaves. Put your black women in charge of the black men. Always glorify the black fever while you disgrace the black male. And this will keep the black race pacified. Women raise children, and they want grandchildren. They love their children. They nurture. They 
Uh, make sure that the children and the next generation are provided for. Men die. Men go and sacrifice for cause, country, for religion, for purpose. That's our game. We go die to go out and hunt and bring back dinner. That's what we do. And I pray, yes, I'm a Chauvinist. I will never follow a black woman into a crucial situation, a white woman or any other kind of woman, because I'm a man. And if I'm not the one that's leading it or somebody that I'm supporting is another man, then I'm looking at myself as a complete abject failure. I don't mind. I have women lawyers. I have women doctors, women dentists. But I'm not going to have a female leader if I can help it. White, black, brown, red, yellow, because that's abdicating my responsibility as a man. And it fits too much into the scheme of slavery and racism for us to be recognizing a black woman as our leader over a black man. Now, I say recognize the lady, but it is a damn shame when we take a black woman and we recognize her for doing what ought to be a manly thing. You can recognize her, but we need somebody else black on a bill first. And the feminists, believe me, are behind pushing her because they know what that'll do. They want to get rid of black men worse out of all of the men in this country. They want to get rid of us first. And they don't care. They want a female and by downing black men and or relying on black folk to go, we got a black person, we got to push the system was down. Uh-uh. There are deeper principles involved in this. Now, I agree what with what you're saying with. there, Judge. I agree with what you're saying there, okay? War is a masculine undertaking. So under most normal circumstances, a man should be leading the women into that war under most normal circumstances. But when you have a case where the man may not be strong enough to do so, then it becomes the woman's responsibility. And that has occurred in history before. We had it with Yah Ashanti Y in the Ashanti Wars where the men were not up to fighting and the women stood up. Of course, that's not most of the time, but my point is I can celebrate black leadership whether it becomes a man or a woman, but more accurately from a cultural perspective, it should be a man and a woman leading. There's a king and a queen. There's a king and a queen mother. In our culture, the masculine and feminine aspects of leadership are always present. So it's no need for us to argue, should it be a man out front or a woman out front? They should both be out front because that is the balance of culture that we as African people believe in. And as African people, we also believe that it is proper to honor women and it is proper to honor men. But in terms of leadership, it should be both of us. I'm just afraid or concerned that based on the comments and conversation today, a lot of black women who support black men and don't support feminism might start listening to the feminist rhetoric because it sounds as if we have a problem celebrating black men when they are being honored, excuse me, celebrating black women when they are being honored without any black man present. We honor black men all the time with no mention of a black woman. I have been to umpteen celebrations of great black male heroes and nobody says, where's the woman? So why once in a while when the black woman gets the chance to shine on her own, why do we have to say, where is the man? If we can honor the black heroes without mentioning a black shero, why in the hell can't we honor a black shero without mentioning a black hero? It's called priority. You find any other successful race on this planet that does that. Any. But... But we're not talking systematically. The, the, the mother, this ain't the systematically. The mother's, the mother's, yeah, the mother's pride in being pride. the mothers take pride in out? being the mothers of great men. We don't have that, and what we have is in our neighborhoods, it has become a matriarchy, and it's a damn failure. It doesn't work. And That's one of the so big reasons it is a so matriarchy. Violence. It does not work. Yes, Judge. That's what I, yes, I agree. In both errors. It does not but work. But, Judge, why matriarchy. is it a matriarchy, Judge? You know what one of the reasons Because why there are no men in these homes. These boys and, are and, not and, getting mad. Not only that, Judge. Not only that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you hear me? Don't stop there. 
Don't stop. Wait, wait. No, I'm going to make my point. I'm going to make my point. No, no. You, you, wait. you made I'm your point. You one. made your point, Dr. No, 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 no. Omar. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to make another one. Okay, well, I'm not being quiet. You have made 30 of them. No, no, no. You've made 30 of them, and all of them are. Brother, brother, I'm a guest on the show. Guys, guys. And here's the point that I want to make. Wait, please, not Silas. Not Silas. Calm down. Here's the point that I want to make. Guys, can we not talk about this? Here's the point that I want to make. And then I'll let him make his point. I'm a guest on the show, so I can make my point. He can wait. Okay. Now, here's the point that I wanted to make. It's true that the matriarchal situation. Hey, Dr. Omar, one second. Please, guys, mute your mic. We do have background noise. Yeah, that's not. Somebody needs to mute their mic. That's not me. Okay, I'm going to have to mute everybody's mic if you don't find the background noise. Please. Well, hang on. Hang on. Hang up the ones who got the background noise. I'm on mute. Ulysses S. Grant okay, here, was one here's what of the I, worst presidents in, in the nation. Wait a minute. Get, Valerie, shut that one down who's talking right now because i got to make my point first. He's not going before me because I said I had something to say. You should have waited. We can't be respectful. You don't need to talk. Okay, here we go. Here's the point I want to make. I agree with what the judge said. The white man has engineered a matriarchy in the black community. I agree partially with what Brother Randy said that black boys are going to be impacted by the rise of feminism to the point where they won't see anything good and wanting to be a man, and they may ascribe to want to be a female, which will help give uh, more strength and credence to this LBGTQ movement in the black community that Barack Obama started, but nobody likes to mention him. I notice how Obama maniacs love to talk about the rise in the homosexuality, but nobody wants to hold Barack Obama partially accountable for that. We can't have it both ways. Don't say you love Barack Obama, but you got a problem with the homosexualization of black boys that he helped promote because you become a goddamn hypocrite. Now, with that being said, here's what I want to say. One, another reason why this matriarchy is so effective in our community, Sister Valerie, is because professional black men, judges, econ- economists, lawyers, doctors, dentists, all have abandoned black boys in the black community for a life in the suburbs or a life with a white woman. This ain't just the white man doing this. Professional black heterosexual men are not in the black community. They abandoned the black community. They turned their backs on black boys, and they have decided to pursue a life in a white person's neighborhood. That's a big part of this. So we can't talk about the matriarchy that the white man is engineering in the black community where professional black men abandon our boys in the ghetto for a life in the suburbs. Let that but open. Dr. Umar, but Dr. Umar, this is, this is Brother Gerald. Not all of yes, us sir. have done that. Not I all didn't of say us everybody, Brother Gerald. I didn't and, say everybody, I understand. But systematically, most of us have. And, and the most part, actually, the most actually part, you did, I, but it's I okay. With that. With, no, for I the didn't. most part, I agree with that because as go back I and listen to your a tape. Program director, as I have been a program director for a number of nonprofit organizations through Northeast Ohio, the one thing that I have noticed is the lack of uh, positive black role models. How are you going to blame the women, Daryl? Mm, I'm sorry. Mm, Jesus, is that my God? Is that question is, is that question posed to me? Who was Dr. Who was Umar, did you address CLW? He's got 60 seconds, and then we got to get your final words. What's that question Go for him? The, Go ahead. Nah, that was that was a question to the elder who was speaking. Okay. Well, I was, I, this, right, is, this um, is GLW. I was speaking. The, I, I had mentioned hmm. uh, of, about the working in Northeast Ohio, but if you're asking me that question, then I just have to say we just got to get people more involved. We have to find ways to get them involved and meet these kids where they're at as opposed to but you didn't answer trying the question, to get them to though, come to where we are. The question was, is part of the you problem the, the fact that professional black men it, it, have it, abandoned it, the black community? Professional it is black part. Men it is have part. It is part and subpart. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes, Dr. Omar. The answer is yes, so let's move forward. But it is subpart. 
It is not totality. It is not the majority. It's not everyone. It is, it is not all majority. inclusive. It is, the majority. it is not all it inclusive. Is okay, so okay, it I've heard you. I've heard you. I've heard you, you and I'm not here to debate or argue with you. With okay, 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 I'm not here. Okay, to, I'm not here. This is not entertainment. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay, so so therefore, talking about this feminism and you What I'm saying, what what I'm trying to do is give. We're going to have to mute. We're going to have to mute. And I apologize to everybody. The female takeover. Dr. Obama Obama supporter what I, get on the radio okay. and talk about okay. how the order takes over. Court. Well, you support the man. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Randy, one Thank at you, a judge. time. Come on now. He's a coon. One at a time. Obama okay. supporter. Okay. Talking about he got a problem with boys. One at a time. Man, and he supported the I've, man who's responsible I've, for. Doctor, Dr. Umar, okay. I've, I've listened to this. Dr. I've, I've listened for two hours. And then we're going back to Dr. <laughs> Thank Short. you. Or whoever okay. this is is talking. Thank, thank right? you, thank Wait, you. I'll listen, I'll listen for two hours. Go for it. I'm timing you with I'm, my watch. All right. I'm, okay. I'm trying start now. to judge. Reply, we're down to the last. Judge, we're absolutely down to the last two minutes. I'm going to have That's to why find Dr. Umar. Fifteen Omar seconds in his, each on this reply. His, Fifteen seconds each. Con- start now. Sir. Go. Sir. Dr. Umar, you got fifteen seconds. One second. While I find Dr. Umar, because I had to mute the board. We are down now to the last 120 seconds. Um, okay. I just want to say Umar, quickly that. Can you please give us yeah. your, your, your final thought sure. and then sure. just all I, wrap it? All I, all I want to say is we probably need to have a conference on this. Brother Judge Joe I Brown, agree. I don't know if you want to co-convene it, but we need a conference on this to talk about this situation between black men and black women as it relates to the uh, war against black masculinity, but also a war against black female progressivity as well. We need that conversation. But I also want to say I take issue with people call up and talk about the fact that they don't like how there is a feminist takeover of the black community, but they supported Barack Obama who fueled it, funded it, supported it, and backed it. That makes you a hypocrite. Don't call up here being an Obama supporter and then run around talking about you got a problem with the outcomes of what Barack Obama did. Be a man and stand on your square, and let's come together as black men and black women to fight racism because we are not the problem. Racism is the problem. Thank you, Dr. Omar. Uh, Dr. Omar, would you be open to a part two possibly next week? I will check your schedule and find sure. out. We're always interested in what you have to say about our live broadcasts. Please share your comments on our Facebook page or websites.